When you're metabolically challenged, there's a tendency to blame you. You're not eating right. You're sitting on the couch. You're whatever. But the reality is, it's seldom that simple. Yes, sometimes your habits and behaviors do nudge you in the wrong direction. And there is an awful lot of noise when it comes to this topic. So we could debate which habits are problematic. The interesting thing is sometimes the problem is being caused by the medical fraternity, directly, prescription meds. There are quite a few that have been implicated in weight gain and metabolic mayhem. Among them are the proton pump inhibitors, antihistamines, and antipsychotics. Today, I want to talk about antipsychotics. These are the meds which are used to treat serious mental illnesses, conditions like schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, depression, and personality disorders. Now, all antipsychotics cause a problem, but some are worse than others. The group which is particularly problematic are the newer ones. They're officially referred to as the second generation antipsychotics. From a head perspective, they work better because their actions are more targeted, but the metabolic side effects are more pronounced. Stats suggest that up to 60% of patients taking these meds are impacted. Now at this stage, the problem is acknowledged. However, why it happens is still contentious and the options to deal with it are limited. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we explore solutions and highlight a potential solution you can implement today to protect yourself from this metabolic backlash. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifer lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, the easiest option to avoid the problem is simply don't take the med. But for many, this is not a workable solution. They just can't move through the world without a little pharmacological help. Option two is to choose an alternative medicine. And chemically speaking, there are quite a few drugs which have antipsychotic effects. So there are options. But as a rule, they all work by altering dopamine levels in one way or another. And this is how they provide their antipsychotic effects. But it's the altering of the dopamine levels that creates the weight problems. So the take an alternative also isn't all that helpful. It's a class effect. A third option is simply to acknowledge it's going to happen and hedge your bets. Get a little pharmacological help up front to manage the situation. The prophylactic of choice is usually metformin, a widely prescribed anti-diabetic medication. But now there's a fourth option. Adjust the timing of the dose. And the great thing about this one is it is a do-it-yourself option. This is the approach researchers based in San Diego have been exploring. The drug that they've investigated is Risperidrone, a commonly prescribed second-generation antipsychotic. Now, they started studying the impact of drug timing in mice. They hid the drug in a peanut butter pellet. And since no mouse in its right mind can resist peanut butter, the mice end up self-administering their daily dose of antipsychotic. Now, the dose they used was 3 milligrams per kilogram, which was designed to give blood levels of the drug similar to what is seen in humans. And the researchers deliberately used female mice in the study because female mice are especially prone to putting on weight when taking antipsychotic meds. But the mice were not on a diet designed to make them fat. It was ordinary chow with a once a day peanut butter treat. Mouse days were 12 hours long with the lights going on at 6 a.m and off at 6 p.m. each day. Now, the risperidone laced peanut butter treats were offered either as the ladies were preparing for their day at 5.30 p.m. or just before they retired for the night at 8 a.m. Remember, 
mice are nocturnal. This means that their day is actually our night and their night is actually our day. Two weeks later, the ladies taking the risperidone before bed were significantly fatter. They managed to put on an extra two grams. Two grams in a week for a mouse is like putting on two kilograms for a human in a week. A devastating nightmare. Now, one of the reasons for the weight gain was they simply were eating more. You can see this here. When the team measured glucose levels two hours after the peanut butter snack, it was clear the drug was causing trouble when it was taken just before bed, but had no impact when taken at the start of a mouse day. Timing mattered for the mice. But uh, humans are not mice. And since mice timing is very different from human timing, the team decided to set about exploring whether the timing mattered in humans too. Now, strictly speaking, testing this requires a clinical trial, something that would be prohibitively expensive and time-consuming. So they opted to borrow data from the VA San Diego healthcare system. They mined the data looking for patterns in weight gain and long-term metabolic outcomes in patients with serious mental illness who had been prescribed risperidone for at least one year and picked up the script, suggesting that they were actually taking the meds and were doing it in the way that they had been told to. Patients were considered to have been taking the risperidone in the morning if the instructions indicated morning, daily, QAM or Q-day and were considered to have taken the drug at night when the instructions indicated QHS or bedtime. Now, this might not always be the case, making this data potentially a little unreliable. In an attempt to clean up the data, veterans with metabolic problems or neurodegenerative conditions were deliberately excluded. Now, even with this less than perfect data, a clear pattern emerged. Timing in humans matters. Those taking the drug at the start of their day were in a much better place in terms of weight gain and metabolic control than those taking the drug just before bed. And if you analyze the numbers, the vast majority were taking it just before bed because one of the side effects of these meds is they make you sleepy. But despite all the inherent uncertainties with this data, the results are unmistakable. It probably is enough to say with some level of confidence that what happens in female mice also happens in VA patients, who for the record are predominantly middle-aged men. So, option number four, take the pill with breakfast. Well, it sounds great. But thanks to those sedative effects, option four is also not very practical. Sleepwalking through your day is not conducive to functioning well. Aish. So our team put on their thinking caps to find a way to use this biology to bring these patients relief. Based on the mouse data, it's clear that the problem has a circadian origin. The resting period is not a good time to eat and take an antipsychotic. The team wondered what would happen if the antipsychotic taking was divorced from the eating. Back to the lab they went. This time they whipped the food out of their ladies' cages, putting them on a time-restricted feeding regimen and watched what happened. When the peanut butter-laced pill was given at bedtime, but the ladies spent the night without access to any food, the metabolic difficulties were diminished. Food intake was lower, weight gain was lower, and sugar levels remained within the normal range. A workable solution? Possibly. The team will need to do that clinical trial and test the ideas in humans before it makes it into the guidelines, and your doctor will advise you to do this when prescribing these kinds of meds. This will take a lot of time and money. If you need to take an antipsychotic to feel human, well, you could wait until the science comes in. 
or you could give it a try. Take your pill before bed, as normal, but close the kitchen early. It's a low-risk, big reward strategy. Time-restricted feeding is considered safe. Actually, many would argue it's more than safe. It's the way we're meant to do it. Our ancestors didn't have access to 24-7 dinners. In the mice study, the feeding window was set for 12 hours. Studies with humans not taking antipsychotic meds suggest fasting for at least 13 hours is the sweet spot to enjoy metabolic benefits. So you might want to work towards this number. Are you metabolically challenged? Looking for answers? Let me take a look. I have years of experience helping people to create better body chemistry and better health. My advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who's taking an antipsychotic med? Please share this video with them so that they can explore whether adopting a time-restricted feeding regimen will relieve some of the metabolic mayhem. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.